Hello, I'm Gavin Horgan, Headmaster of Millfield School in Somerset, the largest co-educational boarding school in the UK. Welcome to the Millfield Way podcast. Here, you'll hear from teachers, coaches and students from Millfield and Millfield Prep School. Millfield is traditionally different, and this is the Millfield Way. Hello and welcome to this Millfield Way podcast. Our names are Maddie, Year 12 and I'm Kernan. Mackenzie, Lower Sick and in Warner. Jemima, Year 10 and I'm in Abbey. And I'm Grace and I'm a day people in Overly. Um, and for this episode, we will be discussing being boarders and day students at Millfield. Um, so Jemima, would you like to start with give us a bit of insight into what being a boarder in year nine is like? And... Um, so for girls there's one house called Acacia and for boys there's two houses called Melford House and Keynes Elm. They're closer to the school and yeah, it's closer to walk to. Um, how did you find the transition from the year nine houses to the senior girls' houses, which are mixed age group? At first I was a bit nervous, especially to be boarding with like older people and people that I didn't really know. But now that I'm settled in and I know everyone well, I'm really enjoying it. Um, everyone was really welcoming and friendly. And having an understanding and welcoming house mistress is also really helpful. And I definitely think my previous house parents made the right decision to send me to Abbey. Would you say that there are any big changes from boarding in year, year, in year nine to sixth form? Um, there's not much of a difference, but there's definitely more freedom and independence when you move from a year nine house. Um, we also get to hand our phones in an hour later, but yeah, other than that, most things are quite similar. What do you enjoy about boarding? Lots of benefits of boarding. For me, I like that everything is in one place, so you can really maximise your time because um, everything is like on campus, so you're not spending loads of time travelling, especially if you're quite a busy person like myself. And then with that, you're around so many wonderful different people all the time. Obviously, you have time to yourself, but it, it's nice to feel like you're part of this big extended family. Nice. And then what sort of opportunities are there to represent your house within boarding? Um, so there's so many different opportunities to represent your house. This can range from um, different sports, maths, um, quizzes, um, informational quizzes, being a rep for your house. So these are things such as the council rep, food rep, technology rep. And then once you get into sixth form, there's being the head of house, which can really widen your experience and work within your house parent, as well as um, students within your house. So with the sports, there's um, inter-house competitions with, obviously there's boys sections and the girls sections, with every sport from cricket, tennis, hockey, football. Um, very competitive, but it's also good fun, and it really allows you to bond with people who are in your house, but in different age groups. Yeah, and that, that looks quite nicely as well to the day houses, because we have our brother-sister combination. So, for example, Overly, which is my girl day house, we link up with um, Eatonhurst, which is a boys boarding house, as well as the other boy day house being great. Um, so then for house events like House Song, we all sort of come together and um, it sort of allows the day and boarders to have a greater mix and sort of we get to know more people then at the start of the year as well. So that's really cool as well. So I obviously get to choose when I go to bed and when I get up being a day people. So <laughs> what, when, you know, can you go to bed and... Um, so it ranges definitely from which year you're in house. So obviously when you're year 10, so you're the youngest year within that boarding house, you go to bed earlier as well as wake up earlier for your roll call times. Because this means in the dining hall, there's not so many people up there if everyone goes up at the same time. So when I was year 10 in house, I woke up at, so roll call was around 7.20 to 7.30. So I'd be up at around 7. I get ready quite quickly, so I didn't need too much time. But then it varies. So then 7.30, 7.40 and 7.50. So you've got enough leeway if you're late to roll call, but you're there to then head up to breakfast to start your day. And so going to bed when you're younger, you have to hand your phones in at night. So it'd be um, for year nine, nine, year 10, sorry, year 9.30, hand your phone in, 9.45 in your own room, and then 10 o'clock lights out. Um, year 11, it's 15 minutes later, so 9.45, hand in, 10 in your own rooms, and then 10.15, lights out. But then once you get into sixth form, obviously you don't have to hand your devices in. So it would be 10.20 in your own rooms. And then after that, there's not really a set lights out, but it's in your rooms 10.20 and then 10.30, they come around to make sure that the lights are all off and you're going heading to bed. And adding on to that, so you spend quite a lot of time at Millfield sharing rooms with other people in some of the houses. So I'm in a shared house 
and you, you start to understand your roommate's dynamic and like when they want to go to bed and when they get up. So it's about being respectful of those things and quite quickly you'll set in, settle into a routine um, that will work for both of you. And if you're like really, really tired like one day, because I know some days I get home and I'm, I'm in bed and sleeping by nine, do you ever get the opportunity to just, you know, go to bed early? Oh yeah, definitely. So obviously we've got prep at um, night time, so seven o'clock roll call and then so on an hour and a half, an hour and 45 sometimes prep. But obviously, if you come back to house, you're absolutely shattered, speak to your house parent and you're like, miss, I'm wiped today. <laughs> She'll obviously be like, yeah, of course, try and get some work done. You know, can't fall behind. Yeah. Get as much done as you can. But after that, you can go to bed as early as you want. If you're younger years, hand in your phone early, go to bed. There's never a problem with that. Mm. But I mean, it kind of varies because obviously I'm always exhausted at the end of the day. <laughs> so much for at work. And it's so nice to just honestly settle down at night. Even though I've got my phone at night, I don't use it at all. After prep, I'm in bed, I'm wiped. Yeah. So it is really nice that you have that. You have that time. You can almost choose whenever you want to go to bed. It's just they want to make sure that you are getting to bed. Yeah, so they, they want to look after your house parents. So over things like if you were exhausted, had a late night, and you really needed a line, for example, as long as you communicate how you're feeling, and then obviously they can make exceptions to make sure you're looked after and doing the best you can. And then what sort of, you know, a typical day for a border? What would that look like? So we've kind of skimmed it briefly, but um, so I'll get up in the morning. I'm quite an early waker, so I like to get up quite early, uh, get ready with my uniform on. Um, then as a house, we'll go to breakfast um, at what, 7.40, um, which is quite nice. She'll be the house then. Um, and then after that, our house goes back to um, our house, whereas some people go straight to group tutor, um, which is in the morning for around 20 minutes, half an hour, Yeah, yeah. Um, which is quite nice. That wakes you up for the day. There's a good chance there to look over, for example, university applications, um, what's coming up in the next week. It's quite a nice start uh, to the day. Then you'll kickstart into lessons. Um, so you have two lessons. Then there's a little break, uh, which is which is needed. So in sixth form, quite a lot of people tend to go to sixth form bar where you can get a cup of tea or a coffee, um, a chocolate bar yeah. um, <laughs> to keep you going. Um, and then you have one more lesson and then you have a long lunch break. So the lunch break is hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah. So that's quite a long time for lunch. But you'll find that at Millfield we do quite a lot of activities at lunch. So I'm a hockey player, so I'll often have a hockey training session at lunch. Um, and then I'll get changed back into my uniform if I have time. There's always time to eat, don't worry. Then I'll have two more lessons. Um, or possibly you have freeze. So there are, there are times when you don't have a lesson scheduled in your timetable. Um, and in that case, you'll just go to the library and get some work done. Um, and then usually you'll have sport after school. Uh, some sort of extracurricular activity yeah um and then you usually have a bit of downtime then dinner which is from five thirty until six thirty, uh and then probably a bit more downtime and then prep which is seven until eight thirty, eight forty five. and on the weekend what would you get up to on the weekend um so obviously on saturdays we have three lessons of school and then we have our sport um after that hang out with friends and we're allowed takeaways so yeah that's quite popular most people get a takeaway where's your number one takeaway probably dominoes Perfect, yeah. yeah can't go wrong <laughs> <laughs> for year 10 we're allowed our ipads overnight so a lot of people download movies to watch together um overnight phones are handed in um on sundays we get a lion which yeah it's really needed um and brunch it changes but it either at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock and then we also get the opportunity to go down to street which is the nearby town um from 1 45 until 4 and after that a few roll calls throughout the day and we also get a sunday treat which is organized by our house mistress we've had cake decorating nacho nights pick a mix fruit it's yeah that's really nice and then we also we have to hand all our devices in on the sunday brilliant um so talking about uh, being in house, um, how are rooms assigned and how does that work, Mads? Um, so personally, in a lot of houses, they're different. So I know for Warner, they have, there's no, in their single rooms, they don't have bathrooms. Mm -hmm. But there's, I know some houses, there's three rooms, two rooms, one rooms, it depends. But in Kernick, so personally, 
when you're in your 10 and 11, you're in a shared room, so it's two people. And recently there have been three rooms introduced in house. And our house, your house parent will ask you, is there anyone you're allowed three names and you get to write down who would you like to be with? Um, so this then allows Miss to say like, who would work well together, who does want to be together. Um, but most of the time it is kind of everyone's happy being with whoever. Everyone gets along in my house. So they just, it depends. You switch around so you're never going to be with the same person twice. Unless you've got a small year group, obviously you're going to have to repeat. But then once you get into um, lower sixth and upper sixth, lower sixth especially, sometimes there's not enough, there's too many people to then everyone have a single room because upper is everyone gets a single room. And in the single rooms in my house, there's bathrooms. You get a pod in each room, so it's got a shower toilet sink which is really nice and it gives you that almost you're grown up now you've got your own room you don't share with anyone else and it's a single really really nice but then for lower sixth some people will volunteer to be in a double so personally I was in a double at the start of this year with a new girl which I loved I don't mind being in a double I like being around people so I really enjoy it but then now I'm in a single so it just depends obviously all upper sixth do get our own single room because it almost differentiates them from the rest of the house because they're now uppers you know they're the oldest year group they get that space and privacy as they're older more independence kind yeah of thing, definitely yeah. which i think and then also year 10s get the three rooms which i'm really annoyed because we didn't have the three rooms when we were year 10 because they just got introduced this year and i would have absolutely loved it but i think it means that when you're younger and you're sharing with people you then you become close with people so obviously i was sharing with a girl who was brand new to the school this year and now we're best friends she didn't know anyone but within the two nights you're living with this girl your best friends already and i think it's really nice because you get to meet new people in a way that you wouldn't meet other people because you are you're immediately living with them. You're, it's fairly weird to think about that you're now having sleepovers every night with a girl you've just met. But I think it really, you become so much closer than people would normally at other schools by boarding. But the rooms are assigned randomly or you pick. Or you get to do it ourselves because Miss goes, you're all close enough, you get to do it. So we loved it and we never have any problems with the rooms in our house. Yeah, it's really nothing to worry about. I've come from never boarding before. So that was a, a big concern of mine of what I'd be like living with someone else. Um, but really that's that's not a problem. You really get used to that quite quick. Yeah. So how do you then, Kenzie, manage your um, prep in-house? Do you have time to do it? Yes. So <laughs> actually, I love the way that Millfield manages a prep. Um, so from 7 till 8.45, which is just after the 7 o'clock roll call, um, everyone's going to be in their rooms uh, doing prep. So that's across the entire school, which I absolutely love because it gives you this guaranteed time to work. Um, so even if you've had a super busy day and you're stressed about not having time to do something, you know you've got that slot and, and no one can take that away from you. Um, you also don't have like FOMO, so uh, you don't worry about other people doing stuff and you're stuck in your room doing your maths prep because um, you know that across the school everyone's also getting on with their work. If you want to go to the gym um, then you can finish prep at 8.30 and then head there or alternatively you can go to the library and do your prep from 7 uh, which is good for people like myself who sometimes need to focus and, and just go into a, into a new environment outside my dorm so I can separate where I sleep from where I work. Um, then on weekends, that's also quite a good opportunity to do your prep work. It's quite nice just to be able to digest all the information you've learned and catch up. Make sure you've got all your notes so you can start start the next week strong. Yes, definitely. On Saturday nights, so there's no set prep time, which is also very nice. One night a week, you don't have to sit down there and do your prep. But there's also, on Sundays, you've got the whole day and you can definitely um, work out what time you're going to do your prep and what time you're also going to relax and have a break from the week. So Jamal, how would you say that tech's managed in your house? Because obviously there's a really big difference between the juniors and the seniors. Uh, yeah, so we talked about this a little bit already, but it um, varies between year groups. Uh, in year 10, we have to hand our phones in overnight. And as soon as we get up in the morning for roll call, uh, we can get our devices then. We hand our phones and iPads in from Sunday to Fridays. And that's at 930 and on yeah Saturday nights we get to keep our phone, uh, iPads and phones are handed in at 10.30. I think it also helps that the Wi-Fi does cut off yeah. at night. So you do have, as much as I would love to sit and watch TikTok all night, there is that, get off your phone now, the Wi-Fi's gone out. <laughs> and the service for me doesn't work, so I am. As much as it's not fun for me, it's, I think, definitely benefits me that I can't just sit on my phone all night. <laughs> How often, because obviously, you know, boarding life is extremely busy, but... 
you know, how often would you get to see your parents and family during the term time and how would that then work? How would you be sort of able to do that? Um, so personally, I live very far away um, up in Edinburgh. So it's a very not easy just to pop home for the weekend. I mean, it is possible. I've done it before, but it takes a lot of time out. So, I mean, you can see your parents almost whenever you'd like. My mum was down recently just for a few nights. During the week, I went and stayed with her in the streets. So I was a day people for a few days, which was nice to see her. Um, so obviously we get weekends. After sport, you're allowed to go home. Um, exiats. I mean, there's so many holidays and exiats that are set. So I don't feel as though I'm away from my parents that long. I think it goes by really quickly. So, I mean, you can obviously see them whenever. They can come down however many times you'd like. But, I mean, it just depends on the person, how often you see your parents. Because, personally, I don't really see them that often. But, I mean, that's just how busy I am at school. And I don't make that time to go see them because it's so far. Yeah. I'm, quite, I'm quite similar to Maddie. So, I live in Wales, which isn't too far. But I live far enough away that, actually, going home regularly is, is probably not the sensible thing to do. So, I, I tend to make the most of seeing my parents in, uh, like, half terms and in term breaks. Um, which at Millfield they're plentiful uh, and that's really well organised. There's lots of international students here so the school's really good at making sure that you, you get to where you need to go, um, public transport or just being picked up. But similarly to Maddie, I, I was expecting myself to, to feel like I needed to see my parents a lot more than I actually feel I do. You're so busy, time goes so incredibly fast. But obviously, if you do need to see your parents and that, that's available to you, you just need to communicate that with, with your house parents to make sure they know where you are and that you haven't run away from school. <laughs> yeah, um, I live in Cambridge, which is about four hours away. So again, I don't really go home too often. Um, and sometimes I try and work in seeing my parents in away fixtures. So that works quite well. Um, the school is, if you take the train, they're really helpful at getting you a taxi, sorting that out for you with your matron. And again, a half term and end of terms, there is organised transport that will take you down to the train stations. So, yeah, they're really helpful and are really organised on all of that. And actually, now with technology so good these days, you spend probably quite a lot of time like FaceTiming and on call, your, on call to your parents. So that's quite a nice way to have that, that regular communication without seeing them in person. I think the school also does really help to connect you with your parents in the work sense. So for instance, you get a good news in school, it does get sent to your parents as well. So that almost, you know, they're, almost, they're kept up with what you are up to at school as well as you telling them. So I think the school really does encourage you almost to see your parents and make sure, you know, you're telling them things. Every time you get a well done, they're like, oh, I've told your parents, I've forwarded the email to them. But you do, the school goes so quickly that you never, I don't think you've never got time to sit and go, oh, I should see my parents this weekend. You've never, you're so busy. But I think then when you see your parents, it's so like rewarding and it's so nice that almost it makes it more special. So when you do, but there's always the option. There's never, a, you're never ever told, no, you can. It's always a yes. The school helps you and encourages you. Obviously, as previously said, they are so good at arranging transport they help find flights trains something's cancelled they'll find a way around it i've personally been driven to the airport by my house parent because my cancelled ha- my taxi cancelled on me and couldn't get another one so she you know got the other got our deputy house parent in charge and drove me and my friend to the airport for half term so they're very encouraging and they do want you to enjoy your time at school as well as appreciate your what your parents do for you to make sure you do get to see them so obviously grace you're a, a day student yeah um Talking a bit about being a day student and that sort of life, can you tell us what to expect to join Millfield as a day student? Yeah, so I would say really there's three main things. Um, the first one being that you're going to be extremely busy, you know, just because you're a day pupil doesn't mean you're going to be any less busy than a boarder. Quite a lot of my friends, they do, you know, netball clubs, you know, locally and they're out quite late some nights in the week doing that. So it's it's all go, go, to be honest, as a day pupil. And then the second thing is, is you'll obviously be assigned a day house. In year nine, um, it's done a bit separately. So there's one day house across the year group. And, you know, both boys and girls are in that house. So it's a nice way to sort of, you know, enter Millfield and, and get to know just everyone really within your day community before then you go into year 10 and you'll be assigned like your day house then for the rest of your, your sort of Millfield life. And then there's two there's two day houses for the girls so you've got Overly and Lakes. So they're, they are technically different houses, but they're sort of in the same building. Um, and the matrons, you know, 
they sort of switch between the different houses. So you're sort of like one big day community, but you know, when it comes to house sport, it's immediate divide and you're then enemies straight away, which is, you know, it's fun, but controversial. Talking um, of divide, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Do you on. think there's ever any separation between the, the day pupils and the boarders? Yeah, I think that comes up quite a lot. Um, but I think, you know, it sort of depends how much you you willing to put yourself out there. I think um, as a day community, we are sort of quite tightly knit. Obviously, you know, we're not at dinner, at breakfast. So there's there's that period of time in the day where we don't see the borders. But there's plenty of socials um, that happen on on sort of Friday nights and weekends where day pupils can definitely go along and sort of meet borders. And then obviously like throughout um, different things like sport and co-curricular like music and drama, everyone sort of gets the chance to mix as well. So yeah, no, everyone everyone sees everyone, I think. And then for boys' houses, for day pupils, there's again two, um, one being mill and then the other is great house. And then I would say, speaking about socials as well, um, day pupils have their own little sort of get together. Sometimes it's during break. Um, we recently had uh, nachos and salsa, um, where we sort of just had a chance to catch up a little bit, um, which was really lovely. So, yeah. As a border, we have house parents and deputy house parents. As a day people, do you guys have house parents and matrons like we do? Yeah, so we, we have a house parent. We also have an assistant house parent. And then there's obviously like the group tutors. Um, and we've also got our matrons within the house as well that are really visible throughout the day. So, you know, even though we are day pupils and we go home to our parents every night, we do have a really strong sort of supportive network at school as well, um, which is really helpful, definitely. About if you are thinking of boarding, um, have you got any tips for people? Oh, yeah, top tips. What well, say if I wanted bring. to board, what would I what would I have to bring? Yeah. Oh, things to bring. I would say a lot of things from home, such as um, even though being a seventeen year old, I've got my teddy bears, which I do think top is priority. it's nice to have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Nice to have, keeps it you know, a piece from home almost. I wouldn't say there's anything you need, like, a necessity. I was going to say, again, like, fairy lights, fairy yeah. Yeah. make it more photos, homely. Yeah. And also, don't overpack. Oh, because do you know everything you bring, it, yeah, go back. Home again. Yeah. Home again. And you have this, I don't know about anyone else, but I have this habit of every time I go home, I end up bringing more stuff back to school mm. with me. Yeah. Mm. And then everything builds up in school, <laughs> and then you can't close your wardrobe. Yeah. Um... So you probably need less than you think. I had a bit of a panic, you know, when I was packing. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to pack my whole life into a bag and take it with me. But that's that's not really the case. Everything you can possibly need, you can kind of get here and you can always borrow off people around you. That's something really nice. Oh yeah, it's like having 50 wardrobes. No, it's 50 wardrobes, yeah. 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 Um, the only thing I'd say maybe is so I absolutely love the food here at Millfield. There is so mm. much good food. I agree. Um, yeah. Paninis and, and fire everything. Just literally everything. I think the food's a real highlight. Um, however, obviously you're eating food that's prepared for you in a certain way, maybe not by your family. And so sometimes for a little bit of comfort, you might want like your own special snacks or something like that, just to be able to bring that with you. Yeah, definitely having a tuck box. A little tuck box is the main thing you need now, especially during prep. You're sat there, you're craving some snacks. It's all you want. So I'd say definitely bring some snacks with you. Yeah. I think definitely that keep you going middle of the week oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I don't think there's anything though that you like need to have like that would change your experience almost at school no. I think just little things you'd forget a water bottle yeah. genuinely I think the one thing I forgot yeah. was a water bottle when I came down here bought one though fine had it for three years now <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely though tips for being a boarder or almost moving to any school is to throw yourself into every activity that's offered totally. yeah. for instance last weekend house football don't play football. Messy, no. But, oh, honestly, yeah. Should get signed next next time. But absolutely loved it. Had a blast. We didn't win, but we were a special mention. End of the tournament that we had, inter-house. Um, but I think the time at Milford grows by so quickly, and it's unbelievable that I've been here for three years now. It feels like yesterday that I joined. So I think you don't want to regret anything not doing it. Why not? I'm not very good at maths, but I did house maths last year. Didn't win, but it was enjoyable, and I loved it. And... You don't want to then next year when you leave think oh like 
should have done house rowing. Why not? Like, go for it. Also, yeah. meeting new people. Don't be scared to meet new people. You live with these people. You spend every living day with people. And I've definitely made friends for life here. So I think introducing yourself, be yourself as well. Don't change other people. Because I think, you know, it's a long time you're here and you do live here. It is. It can get tiring. It can get a lot. But I think having people that you can talk to and you're comfortable with definitely like 100 percent makes a difference i think just giving it your all and mm-hmm. making yeah. making sure you have no regrets when you leave the school yeah i agree with maddie um you know i've been here since the age of six and i can't believe that i'm in my final few weeks so it really is it's a crazy crazy time and you know i've i've done horse riding i've done chess um at one point i, I was certain i wanted to be the top top swimmer but I'm leaving in a few weeks to, you know, hopefully pursue a career in music. So yeah. things change in ways that you wouldn't necessarily think. And by taking up all your different opportunities available, you, you get to sort of find your, you know, individual path and where, you, where you'll end up being. So, yeah. I think that's also because Millfield has so many opportunities. Like, honestly, name it and Millfield will have this opportunity. So I think a lot of other schools don't as well. So you need to take into... You know, I'm very, very grateful for the experience at Millfield, but I want to make sure that I'm always going to be grateful for that. So I think just giving it your all and making sure that you're taking every chance that you're yeah. given. For, for me, like, if I was to give one piece of advice, it would probably be be patient with yourself and with the experience. So you can come into a boarding environment and feel, or a big school like Millfield, and feel like a little fish in a big pond. Mm-hmm. Um, but you'll really find yourself and... And your identity will really start to form when you'll find out who you are. Um, but you just got to give it time. Um, and, and trust me, that'll come. And it's hard because in that moment you're going, no, you know, my life was so happy before, for example. Why have I done this? You know, um, and you begin to question the decisions you make. Um, but trust me, if you give it a bit of time, as soon as you settle, you'll realise that you're really doing the right thing um, for you by taking that step. So, yeah. but there's also always teachers backing you and everything yeah so even if you're like oh i'm not enjoying this at the moment they're like well let's give it another go and you know what if you're not enjoying it if you're really not enjoying it let's let's change sport you try a different thing try a musical instrument and even if you fail and you're not doing as well as you thought you would at something there are teachers and they really do they help you and they lift you up at this school and no one ever goes all right you're not good okay done no they'll push you and they'll push you but in the most encouraging way that you will then you'll love it and you will be like amazing you know yeah. I think there's so much support in every aspect just irrelevant if it's a house parent they help you with your sport if you're not enjoying it and there's always someone to speak to about it that you never feel that there's no one to go to there's always someone to go to and there's always someone to encourage you to do better yeah and then we you know you learn from everything you do as well so even if you think something hasn't gone to plan then you know I guarantee you've learned something quite valuable in that sort of experience which will help you again so so yeah i hope you uh, enjoyed this episode of the milford way podcast in conversation with maddo mackenzie jemima and grace thank you and goodbye thank you